Welcome to session two of Critical Thinking and Ethics. In this session, I just want to talk to you a little bit about reason and emotion in critical thinking. It was Aristotle who mistakenly said that men think with their reason and women are emotional. And actually, the reality is that many times people say, if we're going to be a good critical thinker, I should only use reason. But the reality is that good critical thinkers are able to match reason and emotion in their thinking. You need logic and you need a system of logic, but we also need to be moved with passion and compassion in our thinking. Dostoevsky's novel shows us very clearly where the young man killed a wealthy widow because he acted only with logic but didn't appeal to his emotion, was very destructive in his life. So I want to talk to you about critical thinking with reason and emotion. Think about skydivers and how Reason and emotion have to work together as they're uh, 15,000 feet above the earth and they're plummeting towards the earth. They need to think both logically in terms of monitoring their height, but they also have tremendous emotion as they're up there, uh, enjoying uh, that time and uh, really reveling in it. Reason and emotion working together. And so as we think about reason and emotion, I want to first of all define for you reason. Reason is the process of supporting a claim or conclusion based on evidence. So it's logical. We have the evidence, we reason it through. It is a disciplined use of intelligence and the application of rules for problem solving. And so there's a process through which we work to come to a reasoned and logical conclusion. In logic, reason is presented in a structured form supported by premises. And there should be at least one premise, and often two, that support a conclusion. And so everyday uses of reason are broader and require creative thought and emotional discernment. It's not just about logic. Our reason also needs to be matched with emotion. And I'll show you more of this as we progress. And so reason contains a number of important components and strategies. Reason involves the embrace of different cognitive strategies, such as deduction, generalization, imagination. It also is important uh, in spatial temporal problem solving in fields such as mathematics, engineering, and architecture. And so we need to use different cognitive strategies as we embark on reasoning. Imagination is one that's really important. In fact, in your textbook it points out the fact that many times uh, as we go to sleep with a problem, we awake and have resolved that problem, often because in our dreams uh, our minds are working through that in a logical way. So, reason helps us analyze beliefs and evidence to make good life choice decisions, to cope with adversity. And by the way, adversity is a natural part of life. And we need to face adversity with a sense of the long term. We need to be able to think through the situations that have brought us to this adversity. I uh, spoke to a surgeon who um, left his uh, home uh, country uh, down in South America and went to Chicago to become a surgeon and everywhere he applied he couldn't get in and he talks about there the eight logical factors that he applied in his life to help him get through that adversity until eventually he did become one of the most successful surgeons uh, in uh, the Chicago area. So adversity is helpful to us but we need to approach it with logic and with uh, resolution and uh, with reason and not allow emotion to uh, overpower our thinking uh, when adversity strikes our lives and when problems hit us. We do, however, need to understand the role that emotion plays. In Western culture, emotion has often been thought to, as antithetical to reason and to critical thinking. But in fact, we need both to think critically and effectively. So I want to talk to you just quickly and ask you what emotions are being shown by each of these people here. And just have a look and think it through. What emotions are they showing? As critical thinkers, we need to be aware of the dangers of emotions such as anger or fear, as barriers to critical thought, and also of the benefits of using emotions such as empathy and compassion. Many of our plans in life should never be made with anger. Often we make plans in anger because we want to overcome something that someone has done, or we want to undermine that person, we want to show that their thinking is uh, fallacious or wrong, that what they've done is wrong. And so we may lash out in anger without first critically thinking through why it is that we're angry. Anger is, a, is an autonomic response to a threat that alerts our body to the fact that we must either 
face it and fight or run and flee. And in the process of critical thinking, we can really make good determinations as to what the best response is to that particular situation that has caused anger in our lives. And so anger really you need to diminish as you think through critically and highlight empathy and compassion since these enhance our critical thinking skills. And so we need emotional intelligence and there's a great deal that's been written about emotional intelligence in life. It's the ability to perceive, to appraise experience and it is positively related to abstract reasoning ability. Emotions such as empathy, moral indignation. And I want to just talk very briefly about moral indignation because in the Sudan there was a young woman whose brother had uh, put her forward uh, for stoning. He had charged her with adultery uh, and said that she'd been caught uh, in an illicit relationship with a man and uh, for some reason he uh, had put her forward to be stoned. We learned about this situation, I learned about this situation and it moved me to moral indignation and I wondered to myself, well I'm angry about this, this is not right that a young woman should be stoned simply because her brother may have a vendetta or may be upset with her and now has framed this kind of uh, situation and even if it was the case, should a person be stoned uh, for uh, having a sexual relationship with someone. So I was moved to moral indignation and I had to kick in the critical thinking and try to look at how does one deal with this? What are the issues that surround us and, and what is right and what is wrong and what is good? And so I felt that we needed to take action and I started a petition and got, uh, I think it was uh, over 400 signatures and sent that off to Minister Baird to request that he intervene on behalf of this young woman in the Sudan. I did receive a letter back from Minister Baird saying that they had intervened and that they had been in touch with the Sudanese uh, government, the Sudanese authorities, and that uh, this woman in fact had been uh, um, acquitted of all charges and that she wasn't going to be stoned. And so we should be moved to moral indignation. When we see something that is wrong, something that is not right, we need to act in a way that brings about the good of those that are involved, not with anger, not with spite, but in a critical, thought-out way, a way with critical thinking that enables us to do good and to make reasoned decisions. An empathetic person is more flexible and open, and I think flexibility is a mark of maturity in the life of a person, that they're able to say, you know, we, we were going to do this, we've moved in this direction, but something has come up and it's preventing you from doing that and I'm flexible. We can achieve the goal in another way. I always used to say to my daughters, be firm in your decision, but flexible in how you're going to get there. Because there are many ways to accomplish the same goal. And you want to accomplish it in a way that benefits everybody that's involved and doesn't cause harm to those who are part of the process. Um, emotions can motivate us to better decision making, but they can also hinder better decision making. Examples of the negative role of emotions is fear. And I want to talk about this in the context of my country, South Africa, where the fear of communism drove 5 million white people to suppress 40 million non-white people and to justify that on the basis of freedom. There was no freedom because they were afraid. They created what they called the Groot Swar Gefar, the big black fear in which they said that if we allow freedom and the franchise to people who are not white, they're going to rise up and kill us and wipe us all out, as they did in the uh, Mau Mau uprisings in Kenya. Of course, we know that President Mandela has brought about a peaceful transition and that this killing of, of millions of, of white people did not occur. And so we need to be careful that fear doesn't overwhelm our ability to assess the situation in a way that is helpful and with critical thinking. We need to be careful to emotional appeals. We're very vulnerable to emotional appeals. And again, we have this fatigue, what we call donor fatigue, because we have so many emotional appeals coming at us in the media today. So many people have need and, and need help that sometimes we can lose the ability to say, this is, this is something that is needed. And so we need emotion and we need reason. Emotion alerts us to problems and other people's perspectives and other people's needs. Reason helps us to think those through in a way that is not fearful, not driven by anger, but compassionate and empathetic, helps us to overcome adversity that lies before us sometimes as we seek to enact that decision. Thank you very much.